Howdy all, I'm hoping this is going to be a good episode today because we got a couple of things. We got parts and we got tools to get this apart. <laughs> Before we get down to business today, I just want to recap what we got. The new socket I've been waiting for, throw out bearings, these are the bushes for the main, bushings for the main clutch right here. It'll take about four of those. They're oil impregnated bronze. Uh, I've got some extra bushings so I can fix those egged out holes. Um, clutch packs for the rear main clutch. The port of power. I got two different rams for it. One of them should work. A deal on a working Wyco Pony Motor um, Magneto. Super excited about that one. Official Caterpillar. Got new bolts for the puller to make the puller out of. New keepers for these springs. New inner and outer clutch springs. I'm not even going to mess with the rusty ones. Uh, this is the new pinion gear for the Pony Motor starter. Um, the power pack, uh, new steel plates, and there's the kitty right on cue because I got the camera out. Hey, kitty. More new clutches over here. Ah, the main clutch. Got a new front and back plates. Underneath here, there's the original fiber plate for the clutch and the brand new one. This one's 5 8 thick. This one's a half an inch thick. Uh, they look like they have the same amount of teeth. So, exciting day today. So stay tuned. We're going to make something to get this thing apart. Just wanted to show you, I got the new seat. There's armrests under there. And they fit perfectly in this old D4 seat. They're saying that the uh, part numbers are actually the same in the book as the D2 and the D4. I had these in a watch list on eBay for quite some time. The seller made me an offer. I grabbed them up. And down to business. I'm going to go over into my stash of, you know, scrap steel and see if I can find something that's strong enough I can throw across there to uh, push that 20 ton press against. Got it unboxed. We got two kinds of power packs here. I got this short one and this taller one. They're both 20 ton. But this one's got a lot more throw, I think two inches of throw. And that one is a half an inch, which will be plenty to break that loose. Um, there's the pump. And I am about as excited as you can get about these things. Got the new clutch plates right here. Here's the old ones. And you can see these are quite a bit thinner. So it's actually no wonder that they upgraded this. You can see here, these are a lot thicker. And for a rough measurement, we're looking at about five eighths, roughly, versus about a half an inch. So, substantially heavier clutch. For whatever reason, what really kept me up at night was being able to find one of these fiber discs to go inside the clutch. Here's the old one for comparison. I think the teeth are about exactly the same. So no issues there. The beauty of this power pack, or so I've been told, is that it will work at any angle um, if you have the valve shut. I think this is one of those cases I probably should read the directions first. There we go. You just got to pump it a few times first. And I'm told that this will not automatically... Oh, yeah, it did automatically release. Cool. All right. Let's make something to get this thing on that clutch pack. All right. Bye-bye, bad idea.
is what worries me because I got overzealous with the torch. I kind of boogered them threads up, so hoping that this nut will take. I don't know what I was thinking. Impatience, I guess. Yeah, this is probably not a good sign. Once we get it off of here, um, we can clean them up with a file very carefully. But, uh, yeah, that was not the best idea. It's finally nice and sunny and warm. It's actually warmer outside than it is in here, so I can work with the doors open today and have some nice natural light. Uh, you can kind of see where I buggered up the threads there. The nut will start. I'm going to have to chase those with a file a little bit. The good news is down where the nut sets, uh, the threads will be fully engaged. I didn't bother those down in the bottom too much. So right now I'm just putting the bolts in here that I bought yesterday. And I was astonished. And yes, I was in a pinch and in a rush in, in town and picked them up at probably the less economical choice. But uh, four grade eight... 5 eighths and 3 quarter inch bolts uh, between 6 inches and 7 and 8 inches are, well, set me back about $60. That used to get you a whole bucket full of bolts or at one time maybe every bolt in the store. I think this power pack is going to work good. Um, I'm going to have to elevate it just a smidge, which will be fine because I need to take up some room. So I'll use a old pin or something. In between the ram and the power pack and now I need to focus on building some kind of a plate to go across the top that we can press against with this other power pack the little bit larger ram with the two inch throw uh, I can use these eight inch long bolts and still have plenty of room and I won't have to put a spacer in there and it'll clear the fitting just fine so I think that's the direction I'm gonna lean right now this doesn't work, I can resort back to the shorter bolts. Found a really good piece of one inch plate in the scrap pile, so uh, practically gave myself a hernia pulling this thing out of there. But I'm going to measure this up, uh, how long we need, and how wide we need. I'm going to make it a little wider, of course, than we need to. I'm going to go a good 10 inches, and that'll give me some room for air. And then uh, drill these out and uh, give it a try. We were thinking we might not have anything quite this thick. And the plan was to weld a gusset across the, stop, the top like an I-beam. But um, with this thick of material, I don't think we're going to need to do that. Uh, we'll see. And because overbuilding is just what we do around here, I've decided to make this uh, 10 inches and... Probably by five. Right here it narrows down to about five inches. Out here it's about five and a quarter. Not the straightest of cuts, uh, but it'll work. Uh, how long is this? Yeah, I'll go ahead and cut that at a foot. I'll cut this chunk out here. Mark this with my soapstone. Because this wasn't cut perfectly straight, I'm not super worried about it. This is not a finely machined piece that's going to end up on the machine. But we do need to get a couple of good uses out of it. So I might give this a little bit more meat. Cut it somewhere in there. And I'll mark that up about five and a quarter. This is again not, not scientific. And I'll fire up the torch and cut this thing off. And then really all I'm going to need to do is um, make a marker and drill my two holes. What do you think, Mrs. Big Straps? Are we going to finish this project?
Hmm? What do you think? We're all loving the sunshine today. It's been uh, a few weeks. This snow has really stuck around. And yeah, that's left over from over a week ago when I first pushed snow. And this has been sitting here in the shop. So it has been cold out here. Today we're probably around 40. It's beautiful. It's almost off. Yep, there it is. That cut pretty hard. That's some thick stuff, and this is probably a little bit little of a torch for that thick of material. And for those of you that are worried that these are good liners, they're not. These are the ones we're destroying, so they were perfect to make an impromptu shelf. And, uh, any of you out there know what this is used for? I'd like to uh, milk the comment section for their input. So once upon a time I did actually used to work at a dairy back in high school. Absolutely loved the job. Hard work. Loved it. But here's the piece I cut out. Um, had really good luck to start with, but uh, the further in I think I moved a little too fast, so I had to cut it from both sides. Pretty ugly job, but not something I do every day anymore. Going to hit this with the flat disc so I can get it nice and flat and get it over in the drill press and drill those holes out. And while I was waiting, grabbed a bottle of Coke. Love the real sugar stuff. Next step, we'll measure the spacing here. Well, that thing's heavy. Guess it should be if it produces 20 tons of energy. And now I got my inside ID and OD. I got one factory edge here, so I'm going to try and get as close to the middle of this as I can. And then I'll figure out the center of my holes to drill. That big old boy's still hot, even after I went in and took a quick lunch break. And it looks like this line is off-center, but these sides aren't exactly cut. This perfectly straight, this side's a little thicker. So I kind of just centered on the most mass. Ah, that's a good one. Another good one. Before I go crazy, I'll double check it. 
think that steel's still warm enough it center punched really nicely. And just for an eyeball, make sure that we're not way out of the ballpark. Oh yeah, that looks good. I don't think it's going to be necessary. Uh, I think that this one inch thick plate's going to be enough, I hope. If not, I can weld some gussets across standing this way on either side or even one down the middle to help strengthen it. Pilot holes drilled and move forward from there. Ah, uh, nice sharp one. This is going to look good. I love the smell of cutting oil. And that's one. Let's do the other one. I love it. Big piece of metal. It's going to take a little while to get through this, but it's cutting. Make a progress. Slowly but surely. Kind of take it over and sharpen it a little bit. I'm almost there. There we go needed to sharpen that thing and it went right through. Now for the other one. Got that one. Let's get the other one. I know how to sharpen a bit. A drill. I know my machinist friends would not be happy if I called that a bit. It's still melting outside, but the wind's coming up and it's getting a little chilly. I'm going to run a rat tail through here and just get the birds off, but I just dropped the bolt in there and it works perfectly. Maybe off the hair, so I may have to widen one of these out, but so far, so good. There we go. Let's do the other side and I'll take it over there and see if it fits. That one starts. And uh, maybe off just a touch. But I got room to play with here. I do not know why the shoulder on this one's holding any different. I drilled it with the same bit. Take them both out. And give that side a little bit more rat tail file. I see it. Now, let's see if these will work. It's going through reasonably straight. About as level as I can get it. I might need to just egg this one out of here. So I just took it over on the drill press and these fit perfectly. My measurements were right on the money. So all I got to do now is snug them up, put my press in there, and cross my fingers. We're working out perfectly. The tolerances are very tight. These bolts went in by hand most of the way. Actually, I could probably spin them in by hand now. So we'll get full threads on those. 
And that one's getting there. I think that's it. There we go. Now let's uh, jack it up and see what it does. This one's got two inches of uh, play. Let's see what it'll do. Got my valve closed. Here we go. Going up. Pushing now, I got pressure on it. There she goes. Woohoo! Yeah! That is what victory looks like. Right on! You know, these clutch discs don't look terrible, but I got new ones. I am not going through this again. What a deal. And what a victory. Now, just to do the other side. I do want to thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>